Okay, all right, good morning. Um, I'm here to answer the question as I promised to answer today. Um, and that is, who moved David to who moved David to number Israel? And um, before I start, I first want to appreciate those of us who have commented, those of us who have um, given our input, and especially thank um, Samuel Akendan Usi. Thank you for that wonderful contribution, for letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> and for Matt Young, thank you for the two options you gave. One of it is actually correct. Now, let's look at these two scriptures because I don't want to spend too much time on this. We are not here to say we know it all, but there are certain truths that should be revealed. Why? Because a lot of Christians don't understand who the God they serve is. They don't understand. That's one. And the reason why they don't understand the kind of God they serve is because they don't know how to actually read the Bible, uh, how to read especially the Old Testament. Okay? So, a little bit of foundation. There's a reason why I've put the link or, or the hashtag I put at the top of this post where I put it there. Hashtag G... DNK God does not kill. That's the meaning of that short hashtag. If you click it, read everything under my name, then you have the backgrounds for what I'm about to discuss this morning. There's a Facebook link at the top of this video. Uh, click it and just read the materials there. It will help you to understand exactly what I'm doing right here. All right. So, the reason why we explain these things is to let you understand the kind of God you serve. Most Christians serve a God they do not know. Okay? You serve a God you do not know. And if there's anything that has driven some of us into years of study, is so that we will get to a point where we can actually help people uh, and make them perfect in love. The Bible says, He that is afraid or he that abides in fear is not yet made perfect in love because perfect love will cast out fear so if there's anything about god that makes you afraid okay you still don't know the god you serve his strength his power his ability is for the benefit of everybody who has come to him and even those who have not come to him okay and so this morning i'm just going to make it very simple but let's look at the two scriptures we are looking at first, um, both in verses 1, Samuel and Chronicles, all right? Book of Samuel and Book of Chronicles. Second Samuel 24, 1 says, And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them, against Israel, to say, go, number Israel and Judah. There's already a command that number not the house of Israel. Only anyway. So, there's a report here saying it was the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That moved David to go number the house of Israel, right? And then let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, there's a problem here. There's a serious problem here. Because the first text we read said it was the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, that moved Israel, uh, David, to go number Israel. The second text says to us that Satan was the one who stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So which do we believe? Now, Samuel Akedayomi Prophet made mention of something yesterday. We were part of what I wanted to discuss with you. I'm going to read for word for word what he said because he made it very simple. Now listen to this. He said, the book of Samuel was written before Israel went into captivity. While the book of Chronicles was written after they returned from captivity. 
before they went into captivity, Israel believed that whatever happens to a man must be from God, either good or bad. Okay? And that is why you have the like of Job saying you cannot receive good from God and not receive bad. He was wrong. He said that in chapter 5. After God appeared to him and asked him questions, he had to come back in Job chapter 42, the last chapter, verse 5, to say that all he knew about God was by hears his and rumors. Job just let you know that he didn't know God. Let me state it to you here. Nobody in the Old Testament knew God. Nobody. They thought they knew God, but they didn't. The person who knew God at all to a level and even did not understand him fully was Adam. Okay? Adam himself didn't even know who God was fully. Now, let me give you another funny scripture before I continue to read what my friend put up here. Exodus 33, 11 recorded that Moses spoke to the Lord face to face as a friend will speak to a friend. Jesus speaking in John 1 18 said, No man had seen God at any time. And what I to say that the only begotten Son of the Father, who is at the bosom of the Father, had declared him. Declared him means had manifested him, has revealed him to men. Okay, so in essence, nobody knew God until we saw Jesus. It is a basic truth. Jesus can be wrong. You can, you know. You can conclude a lot of things from the Old Testament, but until you understand the gospel and with the knowledge or insight or the lenses of the gospel, which is the finished work of Jesus, go into the old, whatever you are going to interpret from the Old Testament will be wrong. Okay? Let me give you another example. The Old Testament reported that Elijah went up into heaven, into heaven by wire wind. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, no man has been to heaven before except the Son of Man who descended from heaven. So, the people in the Old Testament reported with the level of the information they had. And that's why you're going to see these guys, Israelites, servants of God. We are not servants. We are sons of God. They were servants of God. God had not revealed himself to them. These guys reported with the mindset they had. They believed that whatever happens, either good or bad, must be coming from God. Alright? But you see, it's easy to conclude a thing until you experience it. And that's why I keep telling people, don't rush on social media to start teaching something because you failed to discover. You've discovered something. Like one dude that came into my inbox yesterday and was just barraging me with Bible verses. I didn't ask you questions. I didn't. He wasn't even responding to a single post that I made. He was just wanting to make me know that he has discovered something. And I advised him, young man, experience what you are sharing first before you share. When Israel went to captivity and knew what captivity was, they knew this can be God. And so they came back to re-report the same event in Chronicles. Okay? And there they said it was it must have been Satan. Now let me let you know this. It was neither God that moved David, neither was it Satan that moved David. As much as they had a change in mindset, the next, the new mindset they had was better because it took God out of the picture. Even this new mindset was not correct. Okay? It wasn't. It wasn't the Satan. It wasn't God. It wasn't the Lord. And may I add this? Whenever you are reading the New Testament, that you see the word L O R U D, either all caps or the first letter is cap, especially under the law, it wasn't God. Do you know who it was? Angels. Angels. And that's why I put the Facebook link above. Go and study spiritual hierarchies are self sustaining. So let me wait that a little. God was self-existent. Before God created the heavens and the earth, there was nothing like angels. We need to get that. Somebody said, when then did God create angels? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word heaven there is not his abode. The Bible says heavens of heavens cannot contain you. The 
Bible makes us to understand that God has no beginning, has no end. Heaven had a beginning. So if you are talking about heaven and it had a beginning and God did not have a beginning, where was he living before he created heaven? You need to understand that in the realms of the spirit, the laws that apply to us here don't apply to them. In fact, the laws that apply to us here, if you know it, is directly opposite the laws that applies there. You have age here, time here, you don't have time there. You have temperature here, you don't have temperature over there. You have length, volume, depth, um, weight. It doesn't exist there. There is no spirit being that needs a house to live in. There is no spirit being that needs to that needs distance to travel. Okay, it doesn't exist. Okay, it doesn't exist. Uh, you know, like I mean, these these laws don't apply in the realms of the spirit. You need to get this. And listen, you need to understand that the kingdom of heaven is a system. Heaven came out of the kingdom of heaven. Earth came out of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Kingdom of God came out of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not a place to get this. When God created the heaven, what he created was not only a place. No, it wasn't. It was a system that included angels. That was when angels were made. There was no hierarchy until man surfaced. When man surfaced, then you had the need for angels. Most believers don't know that angels were created, okay, to serve as messengers between God and men, between God and men, serving men and also doing certain, you know, helping man, protecting, in fact, at some point, teaching men things about the world they exist in. Go onto my podcast, uh, I'm going to also add the link, and see several discussions I've made on angels. I thought how to see angels, those who practicalize the eight steps I give, saw angels appear to them physically. It's not difficult. Angels are around you. If you want to see them, you can see them. It doesn't mean you are more spiritual when you see them. It doesn't add to your faith when you see them, except that it boosts your confidence in the fact that angels surround you. That's all. And that's why it's not a core message I teach. Okay? The reason why angels existed at all was to serve man, was to bow before man. When you read Revelation, I think this is Revelation chapter 17, there about verse um, uh, 10 and the last verse. It said that the angels bow before the, uh, 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 he who sat on the throne and unto the Lamb. Okay? It seems as if, you know, God sat on the throne and the lamb sat elsewhere. Who is the lamb? The lamb is a symbolism for Jesus slain on the cross. The last verse said, the angel repeated, he said, they bowed their head to the lamb, which is in the midst of the throne. So who did they call God there? The lamb. Who is the lamb? Jesus. Who is Jesus as the lamb? A man. Jesus died on the cross as a lamb. Angels bow before men. When they bow before Jesus in the realms of the spirit, they are bowing before you. Because when they see you, who they see is, uh, is Jesus. When angels look at you, who they see is Jesus. Who is Jesus to them? God. Angels will naturally not listen to any man. They only listen to God. They obey the voice of his command. But when they look at you, they see Jesus. Now, Jesus is the head of the church. Your identity card contains the picture of your head. Not your whole body, your head. Your head is your identity. If you belong in the church and Jesus is the end of the church, you need to understand that Jesus is the identity of the church. Jesus is your identity in the realms of the spirit. So when angels see you, they don't see you. If you have the life of Christ, who do they see? They see Jesus. And that's why they have no option than to obey. So when angels bow before Jesus, they are bowing before you. When they see you, they bow to you because it's Jesus they see. When you speak, angels respond. The Bible says that angels have been sent forth to be ministers for, he said ministers for, he didn't say ministers to, read it, ministers for, that is, they, they do things on your behalf, you send them on air while you are sitting, they do it, they wait on you, they do what you have to do. So you begin to understand that the only reason why you have any form of hierarchy in the realms of the spirit at all is because man existed. And God gave dominion of that hierarchy to man. When men disregarded the influence of God and directly or indirectly told God to stay off their affairs in the Garden of Eden. They offset that hierarchy. These are the things you will read in spiritual hierarchies are self-sustaining. They lost the power over that hierarchy. They lost control over that hierarchy. In fact, the hierarchy was offset because God is out of the picture. And this is why when you see the encounter, 
between Abraham and three angels, as it were. One of them was talking to Ad Adam, Abraham, and at the level of discussion, he discovered this cannot be an angel, this is God. In fact, if you read several other commentaries and versions, Adam, Abraham said to, to, to the angel, he said, will the God of the universe do something like this? In fact, the angel said to the other angel, the angel said to the other angels, will I do this thing without, without telling my friend Abraham, really? Abraham is a friend to angel, or Abraham is a friend to God. Now look at the discussion. This man stood with Abraham and was bargaining on what was to happen to Sodom. That means he had the power, depending on what Abraham said, to determine what will happen. That's not an angel, that's God. But look at the statement. He told Abraham, he said that, you know, I have heard, meaning, he said, I've heard of the wickedness in Sodom, and I'm going down there to confirm. I think God is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. But here is God acting on information because he has stayed off the affairs of men. Okay, he had stayed off. It is what he hears now that he acts with. He knows that human life is in danger and he could not do anything to stop it until he had a man, another man on earth, who would stand in the gap. God needed an intercessor. If there was no man to intercede, God had no rights to spare any life on earth. Men, wake up to know who you are. When a God releases a word of prophecy, if there is no man to stand in the gap to declare it, that prophecy won't happen. This was why God could not come in the flesh as Jesus until there was a man sent called John the Baptist to declare. When an angel appeared to Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist, he told him about the birth of that son. The next statement that came out of Zechariah was a statement of disbelief. Now, if the angel did not silence the father of, Zach uh, of John the Baptist, Zechariah, until John was born, John would never have been conceivable. Because these are words, okay? These are words coming out. Men operate here by words, okay? If he has said a word of unbelief out, it would have blocked the conceiving of John the Baptist. If the angel that appeared to Mary had not gotten Mary to a point in discussion that Mary said, Be it unto me according to your word, Jesus would never have come. We need to understand the power that man has on earth. God was telling Abraham, he said, this is what I want to do. And Abraham was asking, if you see 100 people, he said, I will spare. If you see, Abraham should have gone down to say, if you can see one righteous man, but he stopped that thing. Assuming he said, if you can see one righteous man, will you spare Sodom? God would never have permitted the angels to destroy Sodom. Now watch this. Before you go, watch this. Understand this. God told Abraham, he said, I have heard of the wickedness in Sodom and I am going down to confirm if it is so. Three angels left. Angels left the house of Abraham. Only two got there. So did God lie to Abraham that he said he was going down there? This was an error because of what Adam did. That God has been taken off the affairs of men. The hierarchy has been upset. Angels were the one at the top. And angels had dual offices. They served as angels. Okay? Normal in their own hierarchy. That is now elevated. And they acted in the office of God. With situations that has to do with the earth. God only intervened to stop angel killing. Now look at what happened with David. In these scriptures we are reading. Immediately angels started killing people and entered Jerusalem. Read carefully. God had to intervene. And God said, stop. The angel had no option than to obey God. But look at the attitude of the angel. He still stood over Jerusalem with his word. He still stood there. Just imagine that. God said, it's enough. What does that mean? I'm calling you back. A man brought you to come and do this because he broke a certain law. I, God of the universe, said, stop. The angel still stood there with the sword. Because this was the error that angels rule supreme. The error became worse under the law. So when you are reading the scriptures and you see they said the Lord, even his capital L-O-R-D, he killed. It is not God. Those are angels acting in the office of God. It's not God. Oh God. The life, the life that God gives is a gift. None of us deserve that life. We did not do anything to deserve the life of God. But God gave us the life. The Bible says that the gift and calling of God is without repentance. There's nothing that is, is irrevocable. There's nothing God gives that he takes back. When God gives, he gives you total control over it. 
Okay, it's not the Niger like the Nigerian government that gives soldiers gun and can recall it back at any time. No, when God gives you anything, He doesn't look at it again. When God gives you salvation, He doesn't take it back. David said that by the limited knowledge that he had, the light of God, of who God was, was only revealed in Jesus. Only Jesus revealed who God was. My brothers, my sisters, understand this. No man in the Old Testament knew or saw or understood who God is. No one except when we saw Jesus. So if you are reading the Old Testament without understanding the finished work of Jesus, there is no time you won't see a God that kills people. This is what Marcion couldn't understand in his days that made him start to rewrite the Old Testament that this is not God. But he did not understand that there is a way you approach the Old Testament. And more as a matter of fact, calm down. Most of you I'm even talking to are not Israelite people. Did you know that the entire Bible, the entire scripture revolved around Israel? Did you know that the only time Jesus spent out of Israel was when he ran out as a baby to Egypt? He was born, bred, and killed, and resurrected, and ascended in Israel. Did you know that from Genesis down to Revelation, the old books was written within the confines of Israel? Do you know that? Do you know that Christianity is not the same thing as Judaism? Do you know that? Do you know that the law, the Ten Commandments, was not given to anybody that is not a Jew? Read Romans chapter 2 verse, uh, uh, verse 14 and Romans chapter 3 verse 19. The law was only given under a religion called Judaism until the day the Quran becomes the, the you know the, the focus of preaching in a church and the Bible becomes the, the you know canon for preaching in a mosque. That is when the Ten Commandments concern anybody that is not a Jew. And even if you are watching this, you are a Jew. I want you to know that the Jew to whom that law was given is past, not your own present Jew. Today, if you count Israel, census, nothing will happen. Under the law, if you did that. Death was going to happen. And who were forces? Angels will kill massively. Imagine angels are made up of fire and wind. Man is made up of dust and water. You call it mud. Angels are made up of fire and wind. Superior materials. And now you tell angels to bow before man of inferior material. That was exactly why some angels rebelled against men. And if an angel, just one angel, has opportunity given by God... To, to do whatever I want on that, in a twinkling of an eye, 8 billion people will vanish. They don't like man naturally. And that's why an angel will not respect you, except if he sees the picture of Jesus on you. God was not the one who moved David. The Lord there is an office that angels occupied because they were under the law. Listen to this. The Nigerian, for instance, Nigeria has a constitution. The constitution itself does not enforce itself. It doesn't. There are certain people called the police. They are the ones who go out and use the law to enforce what the law has said. Now, the law of Moses had soldiers that were enforcers. What are their names? Angels. When you, if you could, you know, go back in time to the time of David, uh, Moses, and you saw Moses and say, I want to see God. Do you know where Moses will take you to? He will take you past the outer court, he past the inner court, and he told the holy of holies, what are you going to see? You are going to see what you call the Ark of Covenant. Let me tell you what the Ark of Covenant is. The Ark of Covenant are two cherubims, two angels, sitting on top of a coffin. That thing down is a coffin. The name is Arun, Arun in Hebrew. Arun means coffin. So you have a coffin plus what you call the mercy seat and two angels sitting on top. That was God. That was the presence of God. When they carried the Ark to a battlefield, the people they want to fight said, the God of Israel has come. The God of Israel is here. So even the so-called God Almighty under the law were angels. Angels were the ones that acted supreme under the law. Somebody is telling me that can, can, uh, can uh, angels act without God's command? Yes, because man made it so. Man transferred the power of relationship they had with God. They were the ones for whom the hierarchy was created originally. They took that right and handed it over to angels by saying that God should stay up their affairs. And you don't know how they said that? When God brought a help for Adam, Adam looked at God and said, it is the woman that you gave me. What did God reply? Nothing. Piam, he moved. When you cast blame on God for what he has done for you, what you are telling God in essence is that stay off my affairs. A lot of people don't know that. And God refused that, although he had no more rights. To keep that relationship because the right was a man's territory on it. Man seed God off his affairs. 
Okay? So listen to me. If you are reading the Old Testament, certain things will make sense that are nonsense. If you don't... Can I take in a blessed memory said something? I'm talking on the general now because I'm rounding up now. Except if the Holy Spirit pops up anything in my head to speak more. Listen to this carefully. Can I take in a father in the faith that will respect what wide of blessed memory said the following statement? And what did he say? He said, if our Bible studies in our churches was quality, then we did not need Bible schools. So it means the Bible study in your church, in your denomination, if it is not a Bible school standard, and when I talk about Bible school, I'm not talking about denominational Bible school. I'm not talking about a Bible school that belongs to a church. I'm talking about a Bible school that is ready to review whatever they believe. A Bible school that you can challenge and they will look at it and say you are true. Okay? A Bible school that is open. Not the one that it is what our general overseer said that is fine now. No matter how anointed of God he is. Okay? Until we get to that point where our Bible studies are at the level of, of, of Bible school, then Christianity is in error. We're in deep error. Nobody under the law knew God. The closest, the prophet that had the highest level of revelation in the Old Testament was Isaiah. And still Isaiah did not know God like we who are Jesus. They are servants of God. We are sons. Read Hebrews 11, the last verse. He said that with all that they were able to accomplish, we are better than they. He said that they are not perfect without us. The Bible said that. It's in your Bible. Open your Bible and read. This is not to brag. Some of us have read the Bible partly to partly more than 35 times. What am I saying? Have you lost count? Okay. We are, not, we are not just reading because we don't have job. Because we don't want to be in error. We don't want to mislead people. Spent a lot of money, a lot of time, hours studying the Bible. The reason is because the Bible appears to be easy to understand. It is the most difficult book on this planet. And trust me, I've read. I have read books. The Bible is the most difficult book to understand. If you don't know the basics. So anytime you approach the Bible, go with the lens of the finished work. Go with the lens of who Jesus is. If you don't understand who Jesus is, you cannot understand God. So, if Jesus has not killed, God cannot. Does He does not have the ability to kill. It is people in the Old Testament that said he give it and he take back. God never gives and take back. His gifts and calling are without repentance. God has ever killed a fly. God did not even kill a lamp. Listen to this. God did not kill a lamp in the Garden of Eden. The lamp was sacrificed before the foundation of the world. Don't let Moses, Moses on different altars in churches, teach you nonsense. Judaism is not the same thing as Christianity. If you are obeying the law of Moses now, then you must obey it fully. Don't obey the ten alone. The Bible makes us to understand that if you are at in one, you have broken everything. There are not just ten laws of Moses. There are 613. It means you should have the ceremonial laws right now. You should have the sacrificial laws. And you should have the, the, the dietary laws. There are certain food you can't eat. It's in the Bible. Read it. If you want to obey the law of Moses, obey it fully. And for those who say the law of Moses is still here, one person was telling me that Jesus said he came to, to fulfill the law, not to obey it, uh, not, not to destroy it. I told him, can we look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and verse 18 again? Verse 17, Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. I did not come to destroy it. Jesus was describing his method of dealing with the law. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill, Right? The next verse says the law will remain here until it is fulfilled. So it means the moment the law is fulfilled, it passes away. And Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. So if you are saying the law is still here, what you are saying is that Jesus lied to us in verse 17 of the fifth chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, Jesus said, I came to, obey, to, to fulfill the law. And Jesus fulfilled it. Ask yourself a question. The moment Jesus said it is finished on the cross, what happened? An earthquake destroyed the temple. The temple split from beginning to the end and expanded. And because of the expansion, it tore the veil. So that you know that we, we've studied these things. Exactly what happened. It was an earthquake. These guys rebuilt it. Resold the curtain back, if you know what I mean. And kept on with the abomination of desolation. Kept on with their stupid sacrifices. And after 40 years, AD 70, God, Kukuma took the whole building away. She be, I, I, I tore the clothes, you sew it back. If I take the old building, let's see what you do. And today, where the temple stood, a mosque is standing there today. If you are part of the people contributing money for that temple to be rebuilt, you don't know the Bible. I don't care the level of power. And let me sound this. Uh, let me, let me, this is a warning to the body of Christ. 
Power does not validate the truth. There is no miracle you are doing today that you can do. That there is no demonic somebody somewhere doing it. No. Jesus walked on water. Go on YouTube. See people walking on water. It's not acted. Jesus ascended into heaven. See people levitating. Heights that helicopters was flying between them and the skyscraper. Google uh, 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 Chris Angel. Google Chris Angel. Okay. Google Chris Angel and see what he's doing. There are several of them. Miracle does not validate the truth. A man can raise the old dead and does not know squat of what the scripture is saying. God does not kill. It is not in his ability to kill. He doesn't do that. Okay? Anywhere the truth of the word of God is preached, no matter how simple it is, it doesn't have to be deep. Power follows. We know that. And the power, the highest of the power that follows is a changed life. Paradigm shift. Men will think and reason properly. Men will come out of the stupidity of dead religion and can actually see God for who he is. Jesus is not a step-down transformer of God. The Antichrist spirit is one of the spirits that says that Jesus is not God. He's a spirit. And it's in so many people, even up to today, people who don't believe Jesus is not God, they don't know what they are saying. And the moment you begin to say that, then you are beginning to present it as if Jesus is the step-down step transformer of God. So Jesus is the one begging God. God, you are a blood-sucking demon. You need anger management class. But don't destroy these people. Remember, if you want to drink blood, drink my own. God is not a vampire. Angels were the ones who did all the killings. All the killings. So if I ask you who killed the firstborn of, 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 of Egypt, you tell me it's God. Later you tell me it's angel of death. Later you tell me that God was the one who sent angel of death because you saw it written vampire team in the Bible. Please, get the Bible school and go to. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me enroll you in World Central Bible School. Let's teach you transferable concepts. How to interpret the Bible. If I ask you to interpret this statement, he took the left side of the building. He took the left side of the building. What will you tell me is the answer? That is how some of you interpret the Bible. You are going to interpret the Bible like he saw a building and then he took the left-hand side of the building. Like literally. No. He took the left side of the building. That means he died. Simple. So the only thing in that entire statement, he took the left side of the building that is really there, is he took the left side of the building, is not there. Though you see took, is not there. There, is not there. Left, is not there. There, is not there. Building, it is not there. All of those words is died. There's a way you interpret. And let me tell you this. The people you see writing the Bible have a better literature, a deeper literature than we have today. Check my timeline search for truth or tradition and see all the types of figure of speech that existed in the Bible. So those guys reported as per the level of knowledge they had, it was not God who moved David. It was not Satan who moved David. David. It was angels because they knew there was a law that was against that. So angels who are the enforcers of the law in consonance with the law are the ones who instigated David through Israel. Through Israel. Through Israel, read the whole story, so that they will have opportunity to kill so many of them. The Lord bless you. God descended with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And somebody said, you see, Jesus already gave us a parable. Come and slaughter people at my feet. Oh Lord, a parable is not to be taken verbatim. So what did Jesus descend to do? He came to establish and build a kingdom for himself. But there was already an existent kingdom. And so, this is what happened. This is the picture you have. He decided to build a new kingdom on his own land. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. The world is a system in the earth. The world is not owned by God anymore because man was the owner. And man transferred the rights, the consciousness of ownership to Satan. And that's why this same Satan on the, pre on, on the platform of the law appeared to Jesus and said, bow before me and I will give you all the world. Jesus did not say what do you mean? The word is mine. No. Jesus understood that what he said is true. But Jesus refused to bow because he did not come to take possession of the worldly system, the kingdom of the world on it. He came to build the kingdom of God. So when he came to build the kingdom of God, there was the kingdom of the world already on ground. Also known as kingdom of Sodom and Egypt. Also known as kingdom of, of fornication. Okay? I, I don't want to go go into t.me forward slash apostrophe and search uh, who is the great war 
of of um of, of revelation. I think this is Revelation 17. Who is the great war? Who is the great Asher? That great war is Jerusalem. The moment they took off God as their husband and said, We have no other ruler, we have no other king but Caesar. They transferred the love affair they had with God to Caesar, to Rome, and that was why they became allots that you see in Revelation. God, Jesus came to build a kingdom, and when he came, there was a, a, a demonic kingdom, a kingdom of the law, kingdom of darkness. He said, those that sat in the region of darkness have seen the great light. Who is the great light? Jesus. What is the region of darkness? The law. Everybody under the law were in darkness. Everybody under the law were babies, children. They were slaves. They were servants of God. We are sons of God, servants of the brethren, master of Satan. You need to get that. So he, uh, Jesus had to tell those people who were under the law, the enforcers of the law, angels, I am here to build my kingdom. You are the one in charge of this kingdom. You have to pack up your time is to leave. And so what did they do? Everybody slaughtered ribbon was slaughtered because that's what they know to do. They balanced check. They balanced account. It's just like a company is moving, transiting from one year to the other. By September, all projects are sat upon, all project proposals are sat upon and concluded upon. And they round up the year. They close account. They balance account. So the law had to balance account. Angels had to balance account. And angels did the killing in AD 70, not Jesus. And Jesus knew that was to happen. That is why he came as a man on the cross to take the death for as many as who believe him. Those that rejected him said they don't want, they wanted to die. And that's why they died. If a rain is falling, there's rain, and I have a big umbrella in my hand, and I say, come under this umbrella, and you refuse, what will happen to you? You will go wet. It doesn't mean there's no umbrella. So the death of Jesus was the umbrella to shield people out of the self-inflicted and, and, and needed, you know, self-inflicted and justified, uh, what do I call it now, punishment, death that was coming to them. Jesus took it upon himself on the cross. But some guys said they don't want his help. They don't need his help. And that's why they got that death. It wasn't Jesus who destroyed them. The angels who has been killing are the ones who killed. They were the same people, now listen to this, after Jesus died on the cross, they were the same people who killed the road. You say, what? Yes, it was written verbatim. Why? Why would an angel have a right to kill somebody when the law has been abolished on the cross? Now listen, the law was abolished on the cross, but was destroyed in the 70. When you cut down a tree, the tree is dead, but it's still green. It can still do all it can do while it was standing. All right? The tree can still do that. So this is the implication. The tree, though dead, starts to dry up gradually. It starts to dry up gradually. Until it is totally dried, you cannot set it on fire. And that was why Jerusalem, uh, the law, though abolished on the cross, took a whole 40 years to dry up. And that was when fire destroyed it. I'm not talking about that today. Jesus on the way to the cross said, I'm a green tree. If this happened in a green tree, what will happen to the dry? What do you think it was referring to as the dry? The law system, the temple, the Jewish legalistic system, that's what I was talking about. It was destroyed by fire. And so he discovered, if you read Hebrews chapter, this Hebrews chapter is verse 13 or thereabouts. He began to let us know that the law started fading away. It's vanishing. He that works at all is vanishing. The law did not disappear all of a sudden. So after Jesus died, between AD 30 and when Jerusalem was destroyed, AD 70, angels still had rights, although it was diminishing, to kill. So who killed Ananias and Sapphira? It was Peter by using his legalistic mind to activate angels to kill them. If you did not understand what happened between Peter and Ananias, look at what happened between Peter and Sapphira. If you stood and somebody, while you were talking, innocently, somebody just fell down and died before, you will be careful with his wife. But you see uh, uh, Peter saying that, continue to say that the feet of those that carried your husband are coming to carry you. He was deliberate. And yet you see Paul pastor a church where a boy was sleeping with his father's wife and yet he did not say that boy should die. Mindset. Never go into the Old Testament to read if, except you, have, you are reading with the lens of Jesus. Else, what you are reading is an history of a certain generation of Israelites that has gone and gone forever. And nobody under that generation knew God. The person who had the highest revelation of who Jesus was, was Isaiah. The person whose life looked the most like that of Jesus is Joseph. Okay, Joseph. But none of them still knew God. None of them had the light. The best the light was a reflection, a dimming light 
Okay, the, the, the Paul called it a passing away glory. That was the best that they had. God bless you. God does not kill. God does, has never killed a fly. It's not in his nature. Angels were the one who acted. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. You can type in your questions. I'm going to answer. Thank you.